Can we talk about the weather for a minute? Uh, it's April 1st, 2019, and it is like hot one day and cold the next still. So I'm, I'm over it. What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, my name is Beav Brody and on this channel we talk about e-commerce, marketing strategies, and how to get more out of your business in general. So if that's something you're interested in, consider hitting that subscribe button. Okay, so let's talk about abandoned carts. Uh, especially in the early days, everybody stresses over abandoned carts. You get people coming to your store, you're watching them like a hawk, and you've got 10 abandoned carts and you lost out on $700 in sales that day and how do I avoid this and all this stuff. The first thing you need to know is that's just going to happen. Abandoned carts is just part of the game. Uh, you do it all the time, other people, it's just part of it. And that's why you're striving for that two to three, one to 3% conversion rate. If you can get anywhere in the neighborhood of eight to 10% to people to add to cart, about half of that percentage is going to actually uh, begin the checkout process and then half of those people are going to abandon their cart. So just know it's going to happen. Don't stress about it, it happens to everybody. Uh, there's no store that's converting every single customer every time. So uh, don't stress too much about it. But with that said, you do wanna convert as many of them as you can. Uh, so having an abandoned cart isn't the end of the world if you have a few of these things in place. So let's talk about the number one reason people abandon their carts. Generally, it's shipping cost. If you're charging too much for shipping, especially if they came to buy a $15 or let's say a $20 or $25 t-shirt and you're charging $8 to ship it, they're not likely to make that purchase, right? It's just too much money to, for shipping and they're like, screw that, I'm not paying eight bucks to ship this shirt. Never mind, you know? Uh, so shipping costs. So do what you can to try to get your shipping costs in line. Uh, and maybe that's, you know, order two shirts and get free shipping. Uh, free shipping is a really big deal. Think about where all these people are being trained to shop. Amazons and Targets and Walmarts and all these places that offer free shipping. So if you have a way and strategy and margins built into your product enough to where you can offer free shipping, maybe it's not on a singular product, but if it's like buy two t-shirts, buy five t-shirts, buy three t-shirts, free shipping over a dollar amount, whatever the case is, figure out a way that you can offer free shipping if that's possible. And sometimes that might mean you need to increase your prices uh, some people aren't charging enough for shipping and they're losing money on a sale, they don't realize it. So make sure that you're, you're really deep into your numbers, making sure that you have good profit margins if you're gonna offer free shipping or just lower the cost of it and eat it some. Maybe your shirt's 25 bucks, maybe you raise it to $28 and make your shipping $4 and you end up with like a, a net same dollar amount, but perception from the customer is a lot different. So shipping costs is the number one thing dig into your shipping cost, figure out a way to lower your shipping cost, try to offer free shipping if you can. Okay, another reason people abandon carts is just uncertainty, not enough clarity of uh, maybe when they will receive their product. They're uncertain about exactly what they're purchasing. Maybe they selected a black, we'll use a t-shirt example again. Maybe they selected a black t-shirt, but the thumbnail in the cart is showing the white t-shirt and the description says black, but the picture says white, and they're like, I'm not sure which one I'm gonna get. So make sure that everything is set up really, really well in your store to where your thumbnails match the variations, uh, so that in the cart there's no confusion there. If you can tell them about shipping times, uh, we just talked about uh, shipping costs, but if you can talk about shipping times, you know, receive it in two to three business days, or same day shipping, or, uh, you know, ships within three days or whatever the case is, but be very, very transparent and very clear about what they're going to receive, when they're going to receive it, and all that kind of stuff. That will help clear up the uncertainty of what they're getting and when they're gonna get it uh, before they even have to get to the hurdle of the shipping cost. So uh, make sure that everything is very, very clear on your website. Okay, so those are a few of the examples of the most common reasons people abandon carts. But once they've abandoned a cart, what does that mean for you? How can you try to recover that cart? So there's a couple things you can do. One is obviously the abandoned cart emails. Most website providers that do e-commerce provide some level of abandoned cart email functionality to their site. Shopify does it for sure. So if your website platform doesn't have abandoned carts, you need to have some sort of integration with another email 
service provider. Hopefully you have this set up already. If you don't, you need to get on like a MailChimp or a Klaviyo. Side note, MailChimp and Shopify just broke up. Um, they had a disagreement about some who was keeping what data or something, and there's no more like native integration between MailChimp and Shopify. Uh, so you have to use a third-party integration uh, for those two to connect so you get the data back and forth and all that stuff. Or you could use something like Klaviyo uh, to, that has a native integration and has a lot more functionality than MailChimp. So within those other email platforms, you have the abandoned cart functionality where you can send uh, really as many emails as you want over a period of time uh, to try to recover that customer. So, um, you know, however you want to set that up for your business, you could set up one email, two, three. Uh, most people go three-ish emails um, offering an incentive in that. I wouldn't do it up front. I would wait till the second email if you can to offer maybe a 10% discount to, you know, come complete their checkout or something like that. The first email uh, I usually send as a customer search, hey, did you have a problem checking out? Did you have any questions that I can help with? Uh, things like that. So um, try not to offer the discount right away if you can help it. Um, or if you wanna try it, kudos. Uh, okay, so that was email. The next thing you can do to try to recover that abandoned cart is retargeting them on social media. Uh, and you guys have your Facebook pixel set up on your website, right? I mean, I hope you do. Please tell me you have your Facebook. If you don't have your Facebook pixel set up on your website, I will link a video right here uh, talking about the Facebook pixel, why you want it, what it does, how to install it, all that kind of stuff. So check this out. Uh, but the Facebook pixel on your website will allow you to send ads to people who've abandoned your cart. Now again, be careful with your profit margins and knowing how much money you're making and how much you're willing to spend to acquire a customer because you don't want to spend a ton of money trying to get somebody to recover an abandoned cart and then giving them 10 or 15% off and then free shipping and all of a sudden you didn't make any money. Actually, I've got a video on that too. I will link, I'm gonna link a bunch of other videos in the description of this that there's, I have a video that says, are you actually making money? And it kind of has a breakdown of all these things and how before you know it, you're not actually making any money at all. Fun fact. These are actually prototypes of the cups that we sold to Target uh, like last year, whenever that was. You can find them in, in most Target stores, not every single one of them, but the brand is called Proof and they're in a bunch of, they're not stainless steel, they're, well, they are stainless steel, but they're powder coated. They're white, yellow, blue, pink. There's a bunch of different colors, but this is prototype, so that. Anyways, back to abandoned carts. Um, so you've avoided all of the reasons that people might abandon a cart. You've got email set up. You're retargeting them on Facebook. That's really the best few ways that I know of uh, currently in April 2019 to, to try to get back in front of somebody to recover that abandoned cart. Guys, that's it. I hope this video helps you out. Uh, drop me some links to your website down below if it's something you want me to check out. I'm probably going to do some other like website teardown videos again soon, and, and I'm going to be firing up a podcast. So if there's some of you that have like a really pretty successful store or maybe a startup and we maybe we can do a call in or something like that and like walk through steps of like some of your struggles or how I can help and things like that. So I'd be really curious. I don't know how I'm going to structure the podcast quite yet, but I've got everything. Most I'm waiting on a couple more things and then we'll get this thing fired up. I'll have to do a few tests and things like that first and all that nonsense tech techie stuff and we'll get it going but uh but that's it guys i hope you like this video give it a thumbs up if you did subscribe to the channel if you aren't already we'll see you guys in the next video peace